Shantanu Rao, you have scored already 85 and uh, we are all certain that you will score more than 100. And in these long innings, I think you have had a very varied type of life. And uh, the future generations, historians, sociologists, scientists, technicians, economists, industrialists will be greatly interested to know about how is this versatile personality developed which has had a, an impact on the whole process of not only industrial change in Maharashtra but the whole of India and not only industrial change but the change in the outlook of the people commensurate with what is required in the modern techno-economic scientific age. Not only that, those who have come in contact with you know that you have a versatility which reaches to art and literature. Even uh, you have been a president uh, of the music circles and music conferences. I don't know whether you have ever scored a century. I have done it in cricket. Many times I failed to make it too. So this idea that having completed 85 doesn't guarantee the century. However, I think 85 is a long enough time. And uh, from that point of view, I think we could contribute to the experiences, the various uh, incidences that have happened, the moral that comes out of those incidences, whether they will be repeatable, whether they will repeat again for the next future generation. Conditions keep on changing. So what was good or what was bad for 30 years back, 50 years back, may be good today or may not be good tomorrow. So it is a, not necessarily that young people should follow our example, but they should know what has happened. So comparatively that could be a useful incident for them to study and come to their own conclusion according to the conditions that they will develop. That is my I feel. To start with your uh, early years, um, what is your earliest memory? Well, earliest memory I would think was, you know, my father when I think he was building the Yamait Mandap. I must have been about three years or four years. Three years? Yeah. And there is a bit doctor who came and gave a peppermint to me. I remember that. I remember very clearly the birth of my younger brother, who was three years younger than me, hmm. in that mud of... Uh, and I was on the eleventh day of his birth. I think my parents and mother had kept me away from her for eleven days. And that joy that I was allowed to go and touch her and jump on her bed was a joy I still remember. So that was the oldest memory I think is about when I was three years old. So your earliest memory is uh, of your brother after whose birth you were deprived the company of your mother. Yeah. Or the touch and the... That's right. And uh, so you're longing for it. So you have a special relationship with your mother also. Of course. And of course with Raja Ram, yeah. whom I knew extremely well. Yeah. I think you have a special affection for him who developed from that period. Uh, the, from that period, and we have been together for most of the time, excepting my stay in America. Because this is one of the things which has not uh, been uh, known mm. uh, of your life. And uh, this is extremely significant and I would like to say what happened later on that somehow or other in your later period the influence of your mother uh, couldn't take its proper share in the process of your development. Well, I think I wouldn't say that my mother's influence was less. However, the Qualifications for that influence, I would say, besides the natural mother's love, the other thing that was necessary, like education, 
they are limited <laughs> they are very limited her movements around the society there was no society where she had a way of expanding herself in kurloskovani which was a, a village of at that time 20 houses uh, 20 is too long my uh, to me in tharakwadi where it was just uh, nothing so under these conditions her total faculties that were normally do develop in a lady we well, had no chance of developing that to that extent consequently her she could only express her love and nothing else to me i mean she was not i have like present mothers she did not ask me you i must study this and i must study that because she didn't know what to study she would only ask whether i have done my studies for the uh, school what uh, position your father lakhumama to me but lakshman rao I took in all this your relationship with your mother because I think in your later life this basic relationship with your mother and father had played an extremely significant part as far as I can see so what uh, position your father took I think my father took also he only saw that my education was continuing that's about all he could see I don't remember ever he asked me what I studied in school what things are going on and uh, but i do remember that when we came to kirloskavadi i was 7 years old ready for a school and i think one of the first things he did in kirloskavadi to establish a school hired a teacher because i was to be taught so he appointed a teacher and with me there were another dozen children that were there so we were going to school at and that's about all the positive step as far as i remember he took for my education before coming to aung at the age of 7 you had 6 uh, years in uh, tharakwadi in belgaum yeah. at that time you must be remembering your father fondling you telling you stories well i remember more my uncle telling me stories R- ramon oh, ramon russo japanese war you see i remember the uh, seeing the pictures and i uh, wanted the pictures that you could bring and uh, then sonba uh, satyavaka teaching me surya namaskar and uh, my mother insisting that i go there and uh, that's about all i remember my mother you know, this uh, is very interesting Jura, because later on much much later on in the 20s and 30s ramana kirloskar told us stories too <laughs> of another war yeah. the world war 1 one. one yes and of the famine of uh, 1889 durga bai tadushka yes i mean uh, he was the most wonderful teacher of course as you know yes. and uh, communicator correct so it's very interesting that uh, uh, lakumama uh, from the point of view of for intellectual em- emotional kind of a broadening of your horizons took a minor part than uh, ramon well i tell you the, but the other side of it my father Now I'm saying 1910 in Kirloskovadi. He would take classes, or he's a fantastic reader of technical literature. Yes. He always subscribed to various technical magazines, and whenever anything interesting came, he gathered all his people. And I was a, a limbo timbo, rather put it that way, in it, and I was sitting there and listening to him, and that. our discussion of, of that period i still remember the discussion he read or the uh, made on the article on henry ford this is 1911 or 12 some period that time and saying look here is a man who is making a car where every part is right so the car is right now oh. that I still remember his words this is the type of education he imparted me in this form he would insist on me i should go to the carpentry department and work there he had told this foreman there that whenever i come give him some wood to break and now that was my thing. and for vishnu ramana's son yes. who was same age as me he said you go to the blacksmith shop <laughs> and so he was going to the blacksmith shop i used to go to the carpentry shop he taught with the other people for me to make mechanical drawings 
at the age of eight or nine years old. When I was in the second grade or third grade of school, I had a, my own drawing board, I had my own compass, I had my... I used to take the first lessons who he was giving to the uh, officers of that time. As a teacher, your father, was he uh, very precise, very clear, uh, very, very uh, demanding in the sense that it has to be absolutely correct? Well, he was demanding, he was clearer, and uh, there was no punishments for not doing things. But uh, I do remember I made a, a mistake at that time. I still remember the mistake and I still remember how did I made that mistake. I mean, it was not a question of a mistake in the form. The mistake was basically of a drawing how I didn't see that properly. Right. And I drew a wrong uh, picture. And uh, then he showed it to me, how it is to be done. I, I still remember that. it was a hexagonal cone, and the sections of that were to be done. And how to get in one uh, view, that section, how it would look, was something, I think it was beyond my capacity of brain capacity at, at, that, that, time. at that age. But I still remember exactly. But he didn't get angry with you. Oh no, no, he never knows. The uh, this is extremely important because I think it laid the foundation of your whole uh, later exactitude or you know uh, insistence on excellence. So your father uh, really, in this formative age, from uh, seven to say twelve, uh, was very insistent on you doing things with your hand, drawing, etc. One. Uh, thing, you see, I remember, during that period of my presence in Kirloskovati with my father, I absorbed so much knowledge about the factories, machines, machine tools, machinery, tools, that when I was in MIT and when I was the first two years, I was superior as far as that practical knowledge of a factory was concerned than most of the boys that were with me. To that extent, my basic grounding, basic grounding was, was built up. But before we go to uh, MIT, I would like to ask you, uh, during this Kirloskravadi period, organization aspect of Kirloskravadi, as Lakshmana was doing with the help of Antoba and Shambharao and uh, Shankar Bhav, etc., and your uh, accountant... K.K. Kulkarni and Mangeshra. Mangeshra. How did uh, you, at that age, between 7 and 12, uh, or 7 and... 14. How did you react to all this? I don't think I had any reaction as such, but there are a few instances I do remember. You see, there was a... Before Shambhara Zambekar came into the picture, when he was graduated, and then he was working as an apprentice in some mill in Shalap. And the question, apparently, how I, I don't remember, but he should join my father. And... Uh, there was a discussion for at which I was present. Now this is a, I was seven or eight years old. Like I always, I was when I was not in school or other places, I was around my father, and they were discussing whether Shambhara Zambekar who was a graduate, better as a superintendent than the present superintendent whose name was Budhappa, and he was from a mechanic, grown up as a mystery. And now whether to displace the mystery with a graduate <laughs> was was a discussion took place. And ultimately they decided to appoint Shambhara. This, this is all if you ask me about organizational problem. I don't know why they took that decision or but I remember the pros and cons yep. they were discussing on this point. My father always had a preference more to the practical people rather than to these people coming from the college. And uh, there may be one of the reasons that he not being an educated person. To him, any educated person was a, uh, what should I say, object of suspect. The important point is that the basis of the Kirloskovadi, the whole, uh, now I would call it empire, was laid by Lakshman Rao with the help of Shambhu Rao and their Antoba. And they created the basis on which the mechanical, the technological side developed. And the, I'm more now wanting to know from you, the organization and management was all the time kept in the hands of Lokumama. 
Well, I wouldn't say exactly. Of course, the final decision maker he was. He didn't have any reporting system, put it that way, as it is today. Uh, conditions were such that you couldn't say, well, your job is this and you shall not do the other one. Or the other one uh, man must not interfere with this yes. one. There were so few people and so many do jobs to be done. Everybody had to, Everybody had to do whatever job there was. And uh, that was the system my father adopted to that extent that he used to run, or should I say, classes or take a, a real uh, action that the accountants had to work on a machine, machines had, people had to, I remember Mangesh going on to <laughs> drilling machines and uh, to know exactly what machines are so that their accounting will be better. Fantastic. So, so this system was going on. And he believed in this type of a. You you uh, you also believe in this versatility of well, a person. It, it is. I mean, it, it, it is difficult now. Uh, well, well, with, it with it is still still I think at the top man has to have the knowledge of practically the whole aspect of the business, mm -hmm. and that's where I think the later generations are running short. No, because I remember one day, few years ago, two three years ago. You were sitting studiously at the typewriter and doing something with the computer. And I asked you, Shatur, at your age, learning typing? He said, yes, I, I want to uh, get this thing correct. I must know how this machine works. That approach, so really connects to uh, the uh, the you see, the, the Lakumama's approach. And I, I, I do believe that when I'm a manager of a factory today or any time, I have to know the labor law. I had to know the finances, I had to know manufacturing things, market, I had to know the marketing. Now, if I had to know these things, some time ago I must have gone through that thing. And the way I look at it, if I'm a mechanical engineer, I have to know the law. Why shouldn't the lawyer should know how to hit a nail on the head? At least they should have, whether it's a doctor, whether it's a lawyer, whether it's anybody, should have the elementary knowledge of what is exactly happening under his seat. Uh, but apparently many times our people just keep off. I'm a lawyer, I don't know. I cannot do this. I cannot hit a hammer or I cannot polish a bush. Or I shouldn't even. How, how can I? And they're not ashamed to say that I cannot do it. No, so in Kirloos Kavali, the grounding of your approach to this whole process of uh, producing goods and services was laid uh, very firmly and uh, through the practical training that you saw Lakshmi Lakumama giving to his uh, co-workers. Now, in this process, Lakumama had also a reaction to what was happening around uh, in the state, for example, or in Kundal, the nearby village, or in the country with the, you know, the governors and the viceroys coming and visiting your uh, factory, etc. Before you went to uh, the MIT, how was your responses to, let's say, with the, uh, the whole R, the tradition, my father, Surya Namaskar, the Ambabai, the paintings, and all that you used to visit down as, as a child and then as a young man from time to time? I think to basically, if we start from 1911, after Kirloskhodi was started, the first reactions that really were hit or I was formed, I would put it that way. I was like a wet clay, so it was ready to be formed in here. Uh, what should I say, the conflict of establishing a town, a, a, a peaceful town, a working town, my father had to take certain decisions, which were far-reaching, like elimination of untouchability, complete prohibition. People should have healthy occupations. So my father had established these things, I would say, dictatorially, yeah. and which I think was perfectly correct. Then my formation of my thinking was started on that basis. You see, I remember my father and uncle taking pride in touching a man's uh, the untouchable uh, body or taking something from him, or taking a water from him. These things, they were taking a pride in it. At my generation, this was a normal yes, thing. There was nothing to be proud about. And my third generation, sons, 
They have no sense at all of their state. Now, this is carried with me all along. So, when I was in any other place, this never touched us that he was a so-and-so. I was just saying that um, at this very period, so many things were happening around you. I'm talking the period 1907 to, say, 14. Um, for example, one of the reasons that uh, you left Thalakwadi was uh, that the British spies uh, were trying to snoop around and find out exactly why you were moulding things and uh, moulding uh, plowshares and somebody whispered that maybe you will ma- you are capable of making a bomb. This is the time when Rant was murdered and there are certain other murders in Calcutta and other places. Uh, surely the emotional uh, impact, though not intellectual, uh, must have been there. And uh, as I said, one of the reasons for you leaving Tarakwadi and coming to Aum so fast and quickly was this uh, political uh, aspect. Of I, I, I don't believe so. Mm-hmm. I don't believe so. It was an uh, important thing of that I remember. The principal of the Agricultural College at that time Dr. Harold H. Mann. Mann. He had come to Belgaum. I remember very clearly at that time. And uh, he knew exactly what we were doing. He didn't come to see whether we were making bombs, but he was more interested to see how we make the plows. He brought a bunch of uh, students with him. And this process of visiting of uh, the principal and the students of the Agricultural College Two hour factory was continued right up to the, should I say, as long as Harold H. Mann was there as a principal. <laughs> you see, the reason why he shifted for Belgaum to Aun was the Belgaum municipality acquired the land where we were on the factory, mm-hmm. acquired to extend a town and a, a, to establish a modern colony of a good bungalows, good straight roads, and things like that, which is today there, which is called Tirakwadi. But to establish that, they wanted the factory to be out. In those days, the factory was considered as something not desirable in the town. It makes noise, it makes dirt, it makes things. People never realized that factory is a thing that really creates wealth. This was never appreciated by them. And the municipality just asked to, to vacate. Uh, whatever with the compensation given. And that was the reason, and I remember my father telling me that he had no choice at that particular moment of time. He tried with the uh, Jamkindi trade, whether he could go to Angol, which was just across the, uh, within a mile of the, our yeah. factory. But at that time, he was not welcome in the, that state. Prince was at that time. He said, we'll tax you as much as we like if you come to our state. So my father just uh, gave up that idea. So he was just at the wit's end. When Maharaj Aun just gave the Invitation. offer mm. and invited him. The, the experience of moving from Belgaum, that means that, that you have to leave your yeah. uh, friends and urchins at that time. Everything, of course, I was too young to know any of these friends or anything. You were about uh, seven years. Seven, well, seven years you must have been playing. Playing with other boys, yes. No, Gotia, most, yeah. most of these boys were uh, with me uh, to Kiloskori, uh, back. Oh, I see. With the wor- wor- workers' sons. No. Those workers who came, their sons also came with them. So, so that, there, there was no feeling of uh, missing, so, missing so anything. There, there, there was no wrenching away from anything. You were not very firmly established. In no, no, that's right. Not at all. I was uh, just uh, thinking, Shantanura, that uh, this period before you went to Pune for education and later on to MIT, this period had the World War. Apart from you moving to Kirloskovadi and establishing yourself in a snake-infested uh, dry land, Plato, and also of uh, a lot of political murders, etc. None of your uncles, either from Solapur or Ramona, who by that time had shifted to Aund, mm-hmm. it, it didn't have any... Oh yes, World War I had definitely impressions on me. Two ways, you see, 
one was I very clearly remember we were in Aun in school and the only newspaper we could get was Gnan Prakash which was a translation of two days old Times of India and which would come after three days from Pune to Aun and we would ask in the, st in the class or in the school, beginning of the school hour or something what is the latest news of the World War II and at that time I still remember the words of the fort of Namur and Liege uh, the Germans had uh, surrounded it and how the uh, howitzers were using. And at that time, uh, the in school, in the Aun, the Raja Sahib would have every Tuesday afternoon lectures. And I still remember one lecture where uh, Raja Sahib uh, Raja showed Sahib with a board. Raja Sahib, the eldest son eldest, of elde, Raja your Raja eldest Sahib. brother. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, showing how the new weapons are there, how the howitzers work, how they, they go over the trenches and how, with all the graphs and all the pictures and everything. In our school, the Yamai High School, yeah. uh, the teachers were uh, who you had? Uh, well, we had a teacher. I was first in the Marathi school and I had two good teachers. One was Patak Master and one was Deshpande. And they were drawing master. Uh, Devdar. Yes. He was a great man. Uh, he he taught me photography, he taught the picture paintings, he taught, all, all these things were the grounding of my painting uh, talent, you would call it, if it's there. But Devdar was, master. But Devdar was the beginner for yeah. Now, how did you re respond to Kale? Kale was a, was a great teacher. I mean, as a teacher, he was excellent in a lot of things which I have learned and uh, uh, good things I would say not not bad he he was a, a real good teacher I asked you these questions because these were the other foundations besides Lakhova yeah. they were the other foundations of your career yeah, that's right Kare was quite uh, important in my education and uh, he was also appointed you see there was used to be a play for two years we went to Kirloskovadi and my father asked Mr. Kare to continue the education for those two months of holiday in the school and consequently we were much closer to each other mm -hmm. and uh, that was he and Goludikar was also was a, always impressed me really yeah in, the, in what way uh, well listen now uh, the the thing the way he he was all rounder he used to teach us arithmetic math, uh, mathematics anything and he was poetry everything uh, everything then he used to play cricket and then I remember he used to have this Ashtavadhan and I had seen his work, he played chess, he was chess. making poetry, he always had the capacity to build up a kirtan, yes. they write up the whole kirtan or the plays that we had in Aun, his music, he was an all-rounder. Fantastic. And, now, and that impressed me always. A whole uh, sporting activities which were highly encouraged, including swimming in this yes. tank, now, that must have also made some impact. Well, it does make an impact in a sense. It makes a person all round. You see, not only cricket. In Aun, my uncle used to teach us to play atya Oh, yes. Kho Kho and Hututu. We played hockey. So I hardly can say that I had not played any game. I mean, not, I never was a champion of anything. But we always enjoyed the playing game. But and my uncle used to play with us. Now tell me, that time you had about 10 or 12 boys together living in that That's right, ashram. of our family. Ah. We, we were living in ashram. Who were people. they all? Uh, I can start from Kalidas, then Madhav, Madhav Kiloska hmm. from Sholapur, then uh, Chimnuka, yes. who's living, was yes. Shama's father. Yes. Then uh, there was uh, Vishnu. I'm going by age now, oh, I know, I because I still remember the order we used to sit. But Kashi was older? No, my younger than me. You see, these ages were months hmm. difference. Of course. Uh, so, Vishnu was next to Chimnu, then myself, then Kashi, then uh, Kesha, then Rajaram. Raja at that time was the youngest. Uh, and the, in, in between, I forgot, Bhaskar Kirlos, doctor, who became doctor but later. It continued for about four years. Four, five years. Five years? Uh, yes. And uh, one of the things was, in the beginning, Kaku used to 
do the cooking and uh, run. Sometimes we never had a cook. So we used to cook ourselves and Kaku used to teach us how to cook. <laughs> so you see what, what the philosophy I had told before. Yes. That we were not held back from any activity that was healthy. Whether it was playing a game, whether it was swimming, whether it was painting, whether it was cooking, take a pleasure, to, to learn it, and uh, we always had a hand at it. But tell me, uh, in, in all this, uh, the, the Maharaja found must have played some part. Oh yes, he used to come about every month or two to our uh, ashram and say how things, etc., etc. We were proud of him always when he came. But, but at that time, the, some of the uh, activities like festivities or the processions, etc., uh, or the kirtans, etc. You did you? React? Well, we always attended the kirtans. We always attended the jatras, processions, and the etc. lectures. Uh, lectures definitely, and uh, I don't think we missed anything of that uh, activity. But I mean, you reacted uh, in a way that uh, all young people react to something interesting that is happening around them. I mean, intellectually, emotionally, or you resisted? No, no, I don't think I, we resisted anything, including pranayam and Surya Namaskar, etc. We follow. My my involvement with that thing was, if I am doing an exercise this way, I was not fanatic on it. But it was part of them, it's, it's innocent and does good, so I was ready to do it. That was the thing. From Aoun, uh, you took all this to Pune. Uh, yes. Which school? Uh, we know? went to uh, New English school. Pune. New English school. Who, the who, last who, two years. Who were the uh, chief uh, teachers at that time? Well, at that time, the superintendent was Professor Kumbhare. Professor Bondare used to be our uh, superintendent of our boarding school. Mm. And he gave a lot of disciplinary type of uh, mm. Mm. T- treatment. And uh, Professor Paranspe, who was a Sanskrit uh, professor, one day I was repairing my bicycle and he expressed, which really surprised me, I, mean, I still remember, asking me, can I repair a bicycle? As if it was something surprising thing to him and a wonderful thing or something <laughs> uh, unknown thing that a boy can repair a bicycle. <laughs> repair a bicycle. <laughs> that, that, that's it. I, I said, look, this is a normal thing. If you're riding a bicycle, I should be able to repair the puncture. I should do this. Oil the thing, see that everything is right, and that's what I was doing one Sunday. But from the own kind of a milieu, the environment, uh, coming to Pune, did you feel any change? Uh, change, yes, but uh, it was getting more uh, narrower. Uh, narrow. I would put it. Uh, the school, high school, and uh, even then I was going to the carpentry classes there, and I remember one of the teachers was Mr. Mate who was a social uh, person and he was helping to build some temple or something in this Bhokarwadi, which was a slum at that time. And we were the boys from this carpentry school. We went there to help him to build this up. I mean, just as volunteers. Mm-hmm. Now, that new angle was coming into my picture that mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. It was Mate's uh, actions, etc. From the point of view of your emotional and cultural, you know, basis, Aund was really uh, most really signif- more formative. No, more formative, more significant. Yeah, significant. Shantara, what made you change the high school of Aun and go to Pune? I think at that time there was a, some discussion among the our parents, what is good for us, and some people said, well. Training uh, together is not so good. Let's go to the better colleges, better schools. And something I do not know at that time. But we were asked to come to Pune. So uh, basically you were a, uh, I wouldn't say a loner, but you like to do things your own way and uh, your, your priorities were. Yes, I mean, you were not a kind of a person who sat around and gossiped in this. No, 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 I don't think so. Gossip was never my mm. strong point. But at this stage in Pune, what was your uh, kind of ambition? I mean, what were you wanting to do really? I don't think the one can have so-called ambition at that time. The, you see, more or less, I feel now, I was feeling my course is all fixed. There is nothing I, I had to decide about it. I'm going to join the factory. I mean, there was, this was nothing uh, yes or no to it. 
whether I could do or whether I should not do or whether. So basically, there, you, there was no question about it. But basically, at that stage, you must be about 15, 16. Yes. At that time, uh, this is a period of 1920, 21. Uh, about that time. 1921. Yeah. Uh, you you were only looking towards Kirloskovadi and right. coming to help your father. Oh, help or whatever it is, I'm um, just join that uh, institution. No, but I mean, was there a feeling that I wasn't strong enough to or knowledgeable enough to say that uh, I can help? Is it to help you? Have to have a certain strength to uh, in anything. Then, then you went returned to Kirloskovadi. Uh, for one year? Uh, after, after failing my matriculation twice, I came to Kirlo Squad. How did you achieve this glorious end? That's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because... No, you see, but basically, the reason was that in those days, matriculation means you had to pass every paper, hmm. every subject. And languages, and particularly the Sanskrit or German language, was my weakest point. And uh, that thing I just could not get to. And it, it, it was Marathi which helped you to get into MIT. MIT, I mean, yes. That we will come to later on. Now, when you came back to Kirloskovadi, you kind of adjusted yourself to the working kind of a... Uh, no, at, at that particular time, my father said, uh, look, forget this, if you cannot go there. There is a correspondence course available by which you can be an engineer again. So, he arranged for the correspondence courses and I started taking correspondence courses for mechanical engineering. Uh, which institute? Uh, this is called International Correspondence Schools. In India? Office, our branch used to be in India. I, I don't know what it is at present. It was American basically. Uh, and the papers were drawn up there. Mm -hmm. And then there were the uh, illustrations and uh, first explanations and the questions. And you write the questions, etc. And you send back again, they were corrected, send back. So this is I had started. And uh, what happened actually at that time, Madhav, my eldest cousin, cousin. who had graduated from Ferguson College now as a BSc, and my father wanted him to go for electrical engineering to manufacture electric motors. Mm -hmm. And because he wanted to manufacture electric motors, he wanted to be uh, sent to America. My father had a prejudice against the British engineering. And therefore, he's an American engineer better, so you, you go to America. Why was that? Uh, I think it came from his experiences and his seeing the two different machines. Uh, he could think that these American machines were better. Right through our factories, till I was there, it was the American machines which dominated in the factory. They would never had a, hardly any one or two British machines. And uh, therefore, it was decided that Madhu should go there, to America. And mm -hmm. while choosing the schools, the catalogs of various schools had come to Kirloskwari. Mr. Nagarada Ogle, who was there, he arranged to send those catalogs. Mm -hmm. And among which, in this uh, Master's in Star Technology, there was a course of electrical engineering, which was called a cooperative course, in which the part of the year, the student had to go to General Electric Company to work. And this was the only attraction and the reason for choice of MIT was this. Consequently, my father decided that Madhav goes to this. And if Madhav goes, you go with him and you join that school also. How did that decision come about? Because Madhav of course, had graduated, yeah. and you had failed. Yeah. But, um, but your, your father had great trust in you. Trust in this sense. My failure was on the languages. My mathematical uh, marks were first class. Mm. So this itself made up all the difference. And when I went to MIT, very first day, they said, everything else is all right, but you take some language. Even then, uh, I said, look, where the language and engineering no, no, he said, you better have no two languages. And they wanted to have the, besides English, they wanted two languages, foreign languages. So I said, there's a Marathi and Hindi. So to which he said, all right, I'll accept your Marathi, but you st still learn some other European language. Mm -hmm. So I went to a school there, and for four months, from March, April to September, I uh, completed the various other uh, courses necessary to enter MIT. 
and uh, I had taken the German also. I had taken German here also. So it was easier for me to take it than French. So I took German and fortunately I passed some or other there. But when you set yourself um, for your journey uh, to MIT America with mother, uh, there must have been a send-off for you. Oh my goodness, there was a big send-off. Right from uh, Kirloskodi to Bombay. A lot of people came to Bombay, a lot of people. Uh, but what were the speeches like? I don't think we made any speeches at that time. I don't remember any speeches being made. Yeah, but uh, I don't remember the speeches. Uh, I do remember we had a lot of, uh, what should I say, invitations to tea and um, dinners and whatnot. And uh, as if we are going out and not coming back at all. You see, that was the type of... Uh, a lot of crying by crying, exactly. Radha Mami and... and uh, my mother had come right up to the ship. I know. And uh, so this is... Uh, in those days, the journey going to Europe was something uh, going out of the world. Uh, maybe you will come back again. But it, did it affect you emotionally? I mean, leaving... Uh, I don't think it um, affected me emotionally as much to leave India as it was to leave America back because I definitely knew I was coming back in India. Mm -hmm. I was not sure that I was going back to America after the education. Mm -hmm. So the friendships and etc. I had made, they were going to be cut out because the communication was so poor in those days mm -hmm. and we, our total factory was so small. I don't think I will be ever afford to go there uh, to meet my friends again. It's, when we landed in Boston, it was quite a strange thing. What were your first impressions? Well, well, I remember first thing was I met Professor Kosambi. He had come to meet us. Well, we had written, I think, from Madho, uh, some friend here, some, uh, either he was known to Madho or Madho was known to him in the Ferguson College. So the, he had written, uh, he was a professor in Harvard. Oh, I see. I see. I'm talking of Kosambi, old man, and his son is a Damodar. I used to call him Baba. So his father had come, and he had reserved a room for us in some boarding house. And the first evening, most striking thing was, a room was reserved for me, and this was the month of March. In the evening, this light had already disappeared. And when we reached the room, somebody else said, anybody has a match to put the light on. And I was shocked at that time. First, already I was shocked because there were no tall buildings from Boston Harbor to Cambridge. I didn't see a single tall building, which I was dreaming to see. <laughs> and my uh, first uh, impression was, this, is this America? <laughs> and the second thing is when they said, that, have you got a match to light a lamp? And I said, Kirloskori, we have electric light and I'm coming here to America <laughs> with the gas lights. And that was second big shock. Fantastic. You see, and uh, to think that uh, uh, in Kurloski we have no problem anyway. <laughs> there, yeah, 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 yeah. there. So this is what uh, the mm. first evenings. Next day I went to MIT. I was taken up there by doctor. He took me to MIT, showed me the room of the dean and pushed me in the dean. And uh, I showed him my uh, record and uh, he said that you better, this was month of March, the MIT starts this year in September. He said, till then you join a school, a preparatory school, especially for MIT, there is a specializing in it, and joined it. I went there and uh, started my studies. And, and as far as Madhav was concerned, mm -hmm. he said that the cooperative course was not for aliens. Uh, it is only for American citizens. But anyway, we had gone there so Madhav joined the electrical engineering course in MIT, MIT mm -hmm. and I started first to go to school. He didn't have to go to school because he was a graduate here. Mm -hmm. So they accepted him as a graduate. What did he do in the uh, four or five months? Four or five months he was working to earn some money just to, instead of wasting time. So uh, your first day in this uh, preparatory school, that they, uh, they think you should prepare about. Basically two things. You see that mathematics are a little higher than what our college mathematics, first year mathematics was. So I practically prepared for that in the four months, mm -hmm. which was not a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had no problem with that. Also I took 
German. They also took English. Then you entered the MIT itself. Yeah. What was your first day's experience in MIT? First day's experience, which was different than here, was before the first day, we were given a booklet in which practically for every subject, there were certain preparations had to be done before we appeared even for the first day. And uh, when the teacher came in or the professor came in, he put a question on the on the board, which was two or three line uh, question to be answered in another three line thing. It is only to check whether you have read the books that they had prescribed to start with, and which I did not know. And I was really surprised and uh, I had to give practically blank paper because I had not read it. But since then, that was the process all through the four years that whatever they told us to do at home, it was checked when we came. First thing, first two, five minutes was this. Then uh, Madhav was still with you? Oh, no, Madhav was dead. How? He died with the second year. With the second year. That must have been a tremendous shock for you. It was, it was a shock. Again, it is the same thing like uh, it was expected and he died and I had to prepare for that myself. It's the fact of life. That's the fact all. of life, that's all. That's all. And uh, only I remember to forget uh, this thing, to, uh, the shock or anything, instead of brooding, I took a ticket for a cinema and went to the cinema that day. Mm -hmm. I said, look, let me forget this. So you had that uh, capacity to control yourself, your emotions and your uh, yeah. reactions to events around you, right from that. And you I was said, alone there. I was alone there and I had to arrange for the rest of the whole uh, disposal of the body. And that also I had to go through. And I remember one uh, foolish thing I did at that time, after having uh, cremated the body, uh, in a, some, it was a nice place, like a church they had made it. And uh, the man in charge of that thing, and when we f finished the whole affair, and I was going away, and I said to a lot of friends had come there to attend that uh, ceremony. I said goodbye and see you again. I said that was a normal uh, mm. say, say goodbye. Don't say goodbye. Mm. He said, hope to see you again. Mm. And when this, this uh, secretary or the manager of that place came in, I said the same thing. <laughs> and he said, no, we'll, we'll meet some other place. <laughs> not, not, here. Here. not here. Yeah. So see you again. Mm. Has, uh, I no, still remember that uh, yes, yes. I made a blunder. Mm -hmm. But uh, you had to communicate this news to the parents. Of course, telegram. Yeah. There was no teles, there was no telephone, there was nothing. So the Vasudev Ram must have been quiet. Yeah, it, uh, I, I was keeping him completely in touch all, every week by telegram. Mm -hmm. What was happening? Is it, he had uh, a tuberculosis. Didn't it he? was tuberculosis and then he had to go through certain procedures at that time, quite new. Nowadays it is uh, old uh, procedure, not anymore there what they call pneumothorax or something mm. like that, mm. uh, or what... Collapsing uh, the lung. Collapsing the know. lung. So I asked him, the doctor said this, do you ag agree to it? But, Ask. but of all the children of um, My uncle. Uh, uh, he was nearest to you. Nearest to me, yeah. yeah I mean, the we chemistry, together, yeah. chemistry worked much better much than... Better, yeah, exactly. Of our In Pune we were together here, yeah. mm. and he used to come to Kirloskori uh, all the time. He was from his childhood, my mother had erupted him, more or less. Mm. So he was always with my mother. So uh, the, he kind of vibrated the same resonance as that's you right. did. That's right. So uh, to steal against this loss. But uh, tell me, when you were uh, meeting around with uh, your friends, families, etc., uh, your chemistry was not uh, totally impervious to the female charms. Uh, no, I would say so. It was just as a human being. I mean, that, that's why, I mean, uh, you, you were not kind of a yogi or a, no, a no, puritanical. No, I, 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 I won't say that. It was, no, I, I, it's you see that? Uh, it is a natural in that of society. Course. But socially, apart from uh, the female, though the uh, various things that were happening in America at that time, which was just prior to the Great uh, Depression, you had any reaction to the economic or the industrial? Uh, at that time, there was, a, in 22, 23, there was a depression. But it didn't affect us, uh, because I was not really in the line of uh, business as such. It wouldn't affect us. 
However, uh, it was a, a strange thing happened. Very first year, I get a letter from a, a machine tool maker in uh, New York that after going through this list of the new students in MIT, he said, I learned, I read your name, and I do not know whether we have supplied a machine in India to a, a firm called Kirloskar Brothers, and I inquired whether I belong to any, any, anything relating <laughs> with that name. How wonderful. How you wonderful. see? And uh, so I immediately wrote him, and he said, if you are so, you are welcome to visit our factory anytime. Wonderful. And uh, so I wrote at that time, very first year, I said, look, I am uh, the son of the proprietor of that company, and if it's possible, next summer, I like to work in your factory instead of visiting your factory if you can arrange for it. And I was very happy that he said, yes, we will arrange for it. Mm. And so in the next summer, I worked four months in a company called Pratt & Whitney. Who? who? Pratt & Whitney. Oh, At that time, they didn't make any air yes, they, yes. they, they made it uh, about 26, 28. Know, know. After my graduation, yes, they course, went in. Of course. But uh, they were machine tool makers. I, this is very interesting. You had this kind of a sandwich course. One no, it was not a sandwich course. This no, was my I know, own. No, not this one. Uh, but uh, you in MIT, you did have a sandwich no, course. No, no, I didn't have anything. I see. This is on so my you, own. You were not uh, made to go and work in. No, the factory there was no such thing as in between. Two. No, no, no. This was this was only for that one course. Uh, not others. So, but uh, uh, when you went to visit this gentleman Pratt and Whitney's factory, uh, you remember his name? I don't think I remember the name of that uh, name. Anyhow, no. uh, uh, what was your impression of his factory as compared to well, Kaloskovani? Well, it was quite a different factory. It was, uh, I was given a certain uh, work to be done, and that's how we worked. I mean, it was just working more or less on the machine tools. That was nothing more than that.